In the world of extreme wealth, there's rich and then there's Dubai rich. The United Arab Emirates' biggest city has a reputation for extravagance and for good reason. The ultra-wealthy people who reside there and their very spoiled children take splashing the cash to extremes quite unlike anywhere else on Earth. From $2 million camels to gold-plated sports cars and even personal zoos, let's check out how the richest kids of Dubai spend their money. For an outsider, Dubai is a pretty unbelievable place. You can get gold bars from vending machines, the police drive supercars, and you can order helicopter Ubers. There's luxury and extravagance at every turn. Even their Starbucks looks like this. From a brief glance, it's immediately pretty clear that these people have cash and aren't afraid to spend it. Ever since oil was discovered there in 1966, Dubai has rapidly evolved from this into this bringing in money from tourists, trade, and affluent migrants. Having become a prime destination for the super wealthy, the city has adapted to cater to all of their expensive tastes. And for those who can afford to live it up there, and their children in particular, it's a paradise of luxury, designer brands, and wild experiences. If you're going to talk about the rich kids of Dubai, there's no better place to start than with the royal family. The House of Al Maktoum, the current royal family, has been in charge of Dubai for nearly 200 years. The nature of their rule means they're in charge of the oil, commerce, and just about everything else, and consequently, they have access to insane amounts of money. Overall, the combined wealth of the Dubai royal family has been estimated at around $18 billion, which explains some of the unbelievable displays of their wealth that are coming up. At the head of the family is Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. He's ruled Dubai since 2006 and acts as the UAE Vice President and Prime Minister. He's not averse to flashing the cash from time to time, like he did with Dubai, the fittingly named yacht he purchased in 2001 for him and his children to use at their leisure. It cost $400 million to build, and at over 500 feet long, it was the biggest yacht in the world from 2006 to 2009. The yacht has a helicopter landing pad, a dining room that fits 90 guests, a 30-foot swimming pool, and much more, spread across eight decks. With room for 80 crew members and 115 guests, this boat, to put it bluntly, is probably nicer than all the houses in your neighborhood combined. Don't take it too hard, it does belong to Dubai royalty after all. But besides his super yacht, Sheikh Mohammed seems to care more about business, city development, and politics than extravagant displays of wealth. It's his 30 children that really tend to splash the family cash publicly. The most famous of Sheikh Mohammed's kids, and perhaps the most famous rich kid in all of Dubai, is known as Faza. As Crown Prince of Dubai, his full name is Sheikh Hamdan bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, but that's not as catchy, so he goes by Faza online. Faza is also his pen name, under which he's published countless patriotic poems about Dubai. As the crown prince, he holds considerable power within the city, but his duties don't keep him from sharing the exciting aspects of his lifestyle online. He posts most of his rich people activities, like exploring the world, flying helicopters, posing with privately owned animals, and riding water jet powered surfboards on Instagram, where he has over 10 million followers. But he does plenty more than just post on Instagram. He's the chairman of the Dubai Executive Council and the Dubai Sports Council, among other responsibilities. Though it's the sporting side of things that garners most of his public attention. Camel racing is one of the biggest sports in Dubai, and Faza is a huge fan. To demonstrate exactly how big of a fan he is, he once paid $2.7 million for a single camel. This may seem like a lot to pay for a camel, and maybe it is, but it had recently won a camel beauty contest among 17,000 other camel contestants. The original owner of the winning camel split a $2 million prize with the two runner-up camel owners, on top of the money Faza paid him for the camel. With so much money passing hands in these camel contests, that may explain the price Faza splashed out on. 
But whether it was worth it or not, when you have a family fortune of Dubai Prince proportions, you can do stuff like that. But Faza doesn't just like camels, he rides horses too, and he's pretty good at it. He won gold medals at the Alltech FEI World Equestrian Games in both 2012 and 2014. But when he isn't hanging out with the countless horses he owns and rides, Faza travels in style. He owns a fleet of amphibious cars, a handful of tanks costing $500,000 each, a Lamborghini Veneno Roadster, a McLaren P1, a Ferrari LaFerrari, a Bugatti Veyron Grand Sport Vitesse… Whew, the list goes on. Despite his enormous fleet of vehicles, Faza and his old man aren't opposed to the occasional ride on public transportation. At least, that's if these photos snapped on the London Underground in 2016 are anything to go by. Now, for the ladies watching, I know Faza sounds like the perfect guy. He's a prince, he's unfathomably rich, he's toned, he writes poetry, and he owns what could be the world's most beautiful camel. But, uh, he's taken. In 2019, he married his cousin, Sheikha Sheikha bin Saeed bin Tani Al Maktoum. Middle Eastern megastars Alam and Majid Al Muhandis both sang at his wedding. If you live outside the Middle East, you probably don't know who these singers are. But trust me, they're kind of a big deal. Another of Sheikh Mohammed's sons, Mansour bin Mohammed Al Maktoum, is more into extreme sports than cars and camels. His social media is constantly filled with activities like dune buggy riding, scuba diving, snowboarding, shooting massive guns, and zooming around in a high-tech water jetpack. But when he's not doing something that requires a helmet, he can be found on Code 8. Code 8 isn't some obscure Dubai law about where you can put gold bars in vending machines. It's the name of Mansour's 164-foot-long yacht. It requires a 10-person crew to operate and costs $15 million. Sure, it's not quite the $400 million his dad's yacht cost, but I'm sure it does the job. With such an exciting and lavish lifestyle, it's not surprising celebrities like ex-US President Bill Clinton, footballer Cristiano Ronaldo, and rapper Drake want to hang out with him. With a yacht like that, I wouldn't turn down an invite either. Another athlete in the family is Maitha bint Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, one of Sheikh Mohammed's daughters. Among many other successes in her martial arts career, she won the silver medal at the Abu Dhabi World Professional Jiu-Jitsu Championship in 2015. These days, her physical efforts and spending are focused more on polo and general horse riding. With these resources, connections, and, of course, money available to her, she helped establish the UAE Polo Team, which she now competes internationally for. Because when you're part of the Dubai royal family, there's no limit to the number of sports you can pursue and fund in your lifetime. Karate? Completed it. Taekwondo? Been there, done that. Polo? Mission in progress. Not all of Sheikh Mohammed's daughters are quite as much of a source of uncomplicated fatherly pride as Maitha, though. Latifa bint Mohammed al Maktoum, the second daughter of the Dubai ruler, has had a slightly more troubled life. She used to spend much of her free time and money skydiving and wing walking, building a reputation as somewhat of a daredevil. But all the trappings of an exciting, wealthy existence weren't enough to keep Latifa around in light of allegations of imprisonment and abuse she made against her father. With her extreme sport public lifestyle seemingly hiding a darker aspect to private royal life, she attempted to escape in 2018, leaving by riding a jet ski out of Dubai to a yacht owned by a former French secret agent. It seems even the escape attempts of this royal family are lavish. When her escape attempt failed, she was sent back to Dubai, and sadly, she's rarely seen in public nowadays. Latifa's sister, Shamsa Al Maktoum, also tried to escape the family while on vacation in UK in the year 2000. Like Latifa, her escape didn't last long. She was soon flown back to Dubai, albeit in a private jet, and she hasn't been seen in public since. This, coupled with Latifa's story, suggests all is not as perfect as it seems for the Dubai royal family, in spite of what the opulent public lifestyles of their siblings may suggest. If there was ever a situation more fitting of the phrase, trouble in paradise, I've yet to see it. 
But family troubles aside, the Dubai royal family isn't just interested in expanding their wealth and collection of cars and boats. They also funnel huge amounts of their wealth into expanding Dubai itself. In 2001, the family helped provide funds for the construction of three artificial islands, Deira Island, Palm Jumeirah, and Palm Jabal Ali, together known as the Palm Islands. That's right, the Dubai royal family is so rich, they aren't just buying islands, they're making their own from scratch. The extravagant islands, home to some of the most luxurious hotels in the world, could be headed for trouble in the future, however. NASA's laser altimeter satellites have measured Palm Jumeirah as sinking at a rate of 0.2 inches per year, highlighting some of the questionable points about the quality of their construction. That being said, I'm sure the Al Maktoum family can figure out a way to prop the islands up with stacks of money or diamonds before they sink completely. But not everyone who's super rich in Dubai is related to Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. Rashid Saul Belhasa, for instance, is a non-royal teenager who lives a life of luxury that matches and sometimes exceeds that of the royal kids. Rashid is the son of Saif Ahmad Balhasa, who made his billions in construction and isn't shy about giving his son the things he wants. Rashid, better known online as Money Kicks, has a private zoo, which should give you a good starting idea of how lavish his lifestyle is. Rashid's primates, big cats, and giraffes have garnered visits from the likes of Jackie Chan and Mariah Carey, who he named a chimp and a tiger, respectively, after, as thanks for visiting. But it's not just the exotic cats in Rashid's life that purr, his car collection does too. He owns a $260,000 Ferrari F12 Berlinetta with a Louis Vuitton and Supreme print full body wrap. When he bought the car in 2017, he wasn't even old enough to drive it, so he was just sitting around looking cool for a while. He also has this Yeezy-themed Cadillac Escalade, because why not? If the name Money Kicks didn't give it away already, this kid really enjoys his footwear too. His shoe collection is worth over a million dollars, and he even has a custom-made suite with his nickname emblazoned at the back to keep them in. Aside from the money his wealthy father provides, Rashid also earns a considerable amount of his own off the back of his online presence. He has nearly 2 million followers on Instagram and more than 2.5 million subscribers on YouTube. His YouTube channel features a range of videos, from him shopping at ultra-premium jewelry stores to him chilling on yachts and trading sports cars with his equally rich friends. There's even a music video or two where he sings about the rich Dubai lifestyle. Talk about a variety show. But who's going to tell a kid this rich to stick to one video style? His Instagram feed, meanwhile, is full of pictures of him with celebrities like Cardi B, DJ Khaled, and ASAP Rocky. And of course, an endless supply of snaps of Rashid living it up in every way imaginable. I don't recommend looking at his Instagram for too long, though. It'll soon have you wishing your dad was a Dubai business magnate, too. Dalal al Dub is another Dubai resident who's become famous thanks to the combination of being rich and having an internet connection. She's known for her makeup and clothing style tutorials and vlogs, which she shares with her 2.7 million Instagram followers. Judging by her posts, I'm doubtful she's ever been photographed in something that wasn't designer made. She flaunts her expensive garments as part of a very glamorous lifestyle that regularly involves traveling all over the world, usually accompanied by a professional photographer and a stylish pair of wheels. Seems like a pretty sweet life. But would you want the trade-off of constantly having to look perfect coupled with the pressure to snap every moment for the Instafeed? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Our next rich kid, Iman Lopez, was born in Madrid, Spain, but spends most of her time living it up in Dubai as another crazy rich influencer. Iman spends a portion of her time as a fashion designer, but mostly she's known for being lavishly and outrageously rich. She's clearly a fan of the Dubai Mall, where if you spend enough money, you can actually get a porter to follow you around and carry your bags for you, all the way to your sports car. 
When she's not shopping in Dubai, Iman can be found posing in furs and designer dresses with private jets and supercars, or on the red carpet at fashion events. Ugh, it's a hard life, but someone's gotta do it. Our next richer-than-rich citizen of Dubai is Mansur bin Jabir, a real estate mogul who may be the only person in the world to own a shisha pipe made from a gold-plated AK-47. When he's not busy smoking on private jets, he can be found racing rally cars professionally. He's pretty fast, too. Having set records for fastest times in the 2015 FIA Middle East Rally Championship, Mansoor is clearly very modest as well, as evidenced by his Instagram bio, which simply says, genius. But who needs humility when you have an AK-47 shisha pipe? Interestingly, Mansoor once said in an interview that all his sports cars and other luxuries aren't what make him happy. He prefers islands and beaches, and revealed his desire to buy an island, design it all in wood, and have his yacht, Queen Mavia, parked there. He also stated he wanted his own personal airport on the island and, in his exact words, to live a normal life, dive, tan, chill, all while taking his plane back and forth between the private island and Miami. Now, uh, I'm not sure what part of this dream constitutes a normal life, as he says, but it seems he considers himself one of the more down-to-earth Dubai rich kids. I suppose when you're that rich, no one's going to tell you that you may be a teeny bit delusional. At the next stop on the Rich Kid Express, we have Mohamed Beragdari, better known online as Mo Vlogs. Mo is a YouTuber from Dubai who uploads videos daily, almost all of which are about luxurious houses and supercars, many of which he claims that he or his friends own. Much like his friend Rashid Belhasa, Mo's lavish lifestyle is largely funded by his wealthy family, though his almost 9.6 million subscribers strong YouTube channel is certainly bringing in plenty of money on its own. This abundance of cash has allowed Mo to be seen around Dubai driving such sports cars as a Rolls-Royce Ghost, a Ferrari 458 Italia, and a Lamborghini Aventador. He's met various celebrities thanks to the power of being rich and owning cars, including Salman Khan, Rihanna, and Silento. His sister, Lana Rose, also has a similarly car-oriented YouTube channel where she talks about having lots of money and the things she enjoys buying with said money, like her Lamborghini Huracan, which she's had custom-wrapped three times, once in purple, once in Gucci-themed print, and most recently, in a vibrant green dragon print. As nice as that is, I'll stick to my well-loved old reliable. Needs a look of paint, but it's basically just as good, right? On to a more literal interpretation of Rich Kid now, we have this little fellow, who goes by the name Maj. Full name Mohammed bin Ahmed Jabr al-Harbi, Maj is the son of Ahmed Jabr al-Harbi, a longtime friend of Dubai's favorite prince, Faza. As you can imagine, having a family friend like that comes with some perks. I don't think many kids Maj's age have met the Queen of England, for instance, but at barely 10 years old, Maj has already shaken her hand. On Instagram, you can find pictures of him accompanying his father's bestie, Faza, flying in private jets, sailing the seas, and checking out safari wildlife. In his downtime, Maj puts his hoverboarding skills to the test, as well as making time for the kinds of fun shenanigans most kids his age enjoy. But with the youngster's fame already growing and his lifestyle already being filled with expensive activities and rubbing elbows with royalty, you can't help wondering, if this is his life now, what'll it be like in 10 or 20 years? For answers as to what the future might hold for Little Maj, we can look to young playboy Turkey bin Abdullah. As a member of the House of Saud, the ruling family for all of Saudi Arabia, Turkey sums up exactly what it means to be ultra-rich in the Middle East. If Turkey is anything to go by, Maj will probably have a fleet of golden cars by the time he's in his 20s, something Turkey is famous for. Turkey's famously extravagant golden collection includes a Mercedes-Benz G63 AMG, Bentley Flying Spur, Rolls-Royce Phantom Coupe, and Lamborghini Aventador SV, which cost an estimated $1.9 million total. And that was before the metallic gold wrap was fitted, costing as much as $6,500 per car. 
On top of all that, Turkey's generous family fund regularly pays to have his golden fleet flown over to London, costing almost $15,000 per vehicle each way. But it seems, for Turkey, it's all worth it for the number of heads that are guaranteed to turn as he drives by. After all, nothing says rich kid with too much money like a fleet of golden vehicles. With that kind of money, I doubt he was too bothered by the countless parking tickets he accrued while he was flaunting his golden cars around London in 2016. In response to Turkey's somewhat arrogant illegal parking, this hilarious Londoner cheaply modified his own Ford KA to match Turkey's wheels when they were left parked up on a street. Which car wore it better? Let me know in the comments below. But with that said, I feel like Turkey probably should get a few tickets for the times he occasionally let his pet cheetah take the wheel. But as you've probably realized by now, when you're the level of rich that Middle Eastern royalty tends to be, pretty much anything goes. How would you spend your billions if you were one of the rich kids of Dubai? Let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching.